He is a soldier hit by a car in Cheatham County some three years ago. Now, you may be surprised to learn that this story made international news. Why? Because of a claim by the lead detective on the case. Fox 17 News' Dennis Ferrier with a case a family says just didn't make sense and still doesn't. Austin McGill was a proud member of the 101st Airborne. The 21-year-old air assault soldier was living his dream. He loved his job, loved his girlfriend, and was very close to his family. Everything changed when Austin and some soldier friends went to a party in Cheatham County three years ago. One of the soldiers was dating a girl whose parents were out of town. Apparently, there was some tension between the soldiers and the local boys. Austin texted his girlfriend, close family friend Janie Barter. If something happens, I need to jump in and defend my friends. Now that's a very odd conversation to have halfway through a party. Later that night, things got downright strange. Clearly lying on his back, Austin took a 75 photo burst of a truck. Family private investigator Dean Marino. I believe that Austin was either accosted that whoever it was, because the vehicle also turned around and flashed the headlights on Austin as he took, took the photo burst. Things would get stranger. At 3.14 a.m., Austin calls Cheatham County 911. He is obviously scared. 911, location here. Austin appears to be running through the woods and keeps calling 911. Now he's far from the party pinged in deep woods. It feels like they want to kidnap me. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not insane. They just want to kidnap me. The last of the 911 calls comes at 339. The tone has changed. Austin acts like everything is okay. Let me get you some help. No. No, no, no. Okay, well, you called 911, sir, and you, you sounded genuinely scared. No, I'm fine now. All right. Um, I found everyone. I'm fine now. And good night, all right? 14 minutes later, Austin McGill comes crashing out of the woods onto Highway 41A when a teenager runs him over. Now on one location of emergency. I just hit somebody on the road. I don't know where I am. Please, please, they are dead. They're literally dead. As she waits for police, the unthinkable, another car barreling toward Austin lying in the road. No. Austin is run over a second time. A few minutes later, it happens again. Austin McGeo dies in the middle of the road, run over three times. Just up the street at the Pleasant View Nursery, police find a crime scene. A retail trailer has been broken into, ransacked, someone ate pizza, broke jam jars, pulled out the register, pulled out the credit card reader, went to the bathroom. In the middle of the mess, Austin McGeo's phone and wallet are sitting undisturbed on a desk. Cheatham County lead detective Jeff Landis decides he knew exactly what happened that night. They basically said that Austin was not chased by people, he was chased by bees because he broke into the back of the nursery and put his hand through a wasp's nest. He ransacked the nursery, drunk and hallucinating. He was chased by bees to his death onto Highway 41A. That story made news all over the world. Hallucinating, crazed soldier chased by wasps to his death. But here's the thing, is that what really happened? because there were some big problems with this investigation, as you're about to see right after this commercial break on Fox 17 News at 9. A Cheatham County detective said Fort Campbell soldier Austin McGill was chased by wasps to his death after ransacking a local nursery. The family says none of this is true, and while they don't have all the answers themselves, they have some of them. Here's Fox 17 News' Dennis Ferrier with the rest of his investigation. Fort Campbell soldier Austin McGeo died right here on Highway 41A. His family from Connecticut always refreshes his memorial. I love and I miss you, Austin, and we put all kinds of little things there, so. But that's not why they're here. They are still trying to find out what really happened that night. McGeo was run over by three cars after running through the woods, calling 911 multiple times. He claimed he was being chased by people from a party he was attending. These people are crazy. I swear to God, these people are crazy. I swear to God. The family sent these 911 calls to a special forensic audio enhancement lab, and the lab discovered seven instances of background speech, voices within the range of Austin McGeo's cell phone microphone, most of it unintelligible, with key exceptions. 
So in one of the instances, the background male voice said, he's right there. He's right there. Chilling, but not as chilling as the last voice on the last 911 call. Tell her, just two words, tell her, her. They were close enough to Austin's microphone that they determined that the 911 operator was a her. But what about the ransacked trailer at the nursery? Jam jars broken, register pulled out, produce smashed. If McGeeo did all these things, his DNA footprints, fingerprints would be all over the place. Remember the pizza he ate before he disturbed that wasp nest as he ran to his death? Guess what? No fingerprints, no DNA, no other forensic evidence to put Austin specifically in there. The Cheatham County Sheriff's Department did not collect forensic evidence from the trailer. The autopsy further destroys the Cheatham County Sheriff's Department theory. No pizza in his stomach, no wasp stings. McGill was very intoxicated and had Percocet in his system, a narcotic his family says he had a prescription for because of his wisdom teeth. But why would McGill leave his phone and wallet in the nursery? His phone was his lifeline during this awful incident. His wallet contained pictures of his family, his ID, his credit cards, his cash. The cash was still in there. This wasn't about robbery. Why would Austin leave his lifeline and the thing that's closest to everybody that they have on them all the time, their wallet, why would he leave that there? He wouldn't. The lead detective on the case, Jeff Landis, is no longer with the Cheatham County Sheriff's Department. He resigned after two of his investigations were questioned by the court. Judge David Wolf, quote, I have some real issues of the credibility of Mr. Landis, unquote. Later, District Attorney Ray Crouch was asked, quote, so are you going to be able to just trust Detective Landis moving forward? Crouch, I would have to say no. The family turned everything over to DA Ray Crouch, who wrote in an email, I agree with your conclusions that the nursery store crime scene was not thoroughly processed. This is an example of how a stupid comment can greatly distract all of us from the mission of finding facts. Nevertheless, it's been three years. Austin McGee was prepared to die for his country, but not like this. Because everybody deserves that. Everybody, not because he was a soldier, not because he was my son, because he's a human being, and that's what we deserve. He's an American, though. He was going to go and fight for everything, for all of our freedoms. Why, why shouldn't he have some respect? I mean, I've, I've not only buried my son, and I don't want anyone to feel bad for me, but I've, I've investigated my son's own death, and it's like, who should have to do that? I wish this never happened, but I'm trying to get the justice the best that I can for him. I love you, Austin. District Attorney Ray Crouch says there is just no concrete evidence Austin McGee was being chased by people. He says the TBI concluded the other voices on the 911 calls could have been feedback, that they're inconclusive. However, he is leaving the case open. The family is offering a $10,000 reward for information that leads to a conviction. I'm Dennis Ferrier, Fox 17 News, your Code Red Station.